it is not 54 slides long. That is just includes next week's stuff as well, um, which might change, I think, possibly need to go back to it. But uh, for now, we can start off with expressions. Uh, this is the first part, so we're kind of going halfway. Uh, hopefully I'll remember where that is. Okay, so expressions are kind of like a way of describing an action um, rather than just being the action itself. Um, and the example here, you can see if you write something like this, where you've got num, num days is assigned to num weeks times seven, uh, you get an error because the object uh, num weeks is not found because it doesn't exist. Um, but there could be reasons why you would, uh, why you'd still want to be able to capture that, uh, what you've written there as an expression. So we can describe that using uh, rlang and using the function expr. Um, so, uh, so here we've got kind of something like day count is this rlang expr number of days, which is what we had up here, number of weeks say is four now, and then you evaluate it and uh, did it work? Well, if you now look at number of days, it exists. Um, cool. I think that almost overcomplicates it. I feel like it's not like that complicated. Um, okay, then we have a section on abstract syntax trees, AST. Um, so it's also about drawing them, uh, an activity that I don't plan on doing much, but uh, this is how they're shown in the book. So the first way of drawing them is in this kind of visual diagram, or I think it says like by hand, um, which yeah, looks like that, for example, or you can use uh, AST function from Lobster, um, which gives you kind of like, you can run it in the console or whatever, and it'll give you this kind of output that reflects a similar idea. Um, where you've got your function calls drawn as orange rectangles, symbols are in purple with rounded corners, and constants are black with squared corners. Um, and the first child is the function, which is called f in this example. Oh, is the function called, which is f in this example. Um, a quick aside that I did not get these neat little outputs when I used AST, which you'll see later. Um, I don't know if that's going to be a me thing and a version thing, or if that's like something that other people experienced, but I feel like this isn't always as like neat as it looks here. And I quite often had to like screenshot to get this rather than do it myself because it didn't look like that. Um, but nonetheless, there's the conventions. Uh, so they're abstract syntax trees. Um, because they don't capture everything. So they don't really capture details that aren't really relevant to structure. So if you have comments in there or white space, it's not gonna, it's not gonna document every single little bit. Um, and it gave one example of white space being relevant. I think the only example they said um, where you've got the assign thing, uh, arrow, um, but you could also, you could put a space in between uh, and then it would mean something different, uh, like here, because you'd have those two signs rather than the kind of like joined together assigned function kind of thing. I think that's a kind of like spe very specific example, but like other than that, white space is not getting caught. Okay, so infix calls, i.e. these kind of like, you know, functions just like anything else, but that you don't write with normally, or don't normally write with your brackets, um, like the assign function and plus and other arithmetic uh, signs. Um, they can be written in prefix form, prefix form. Um, and that means that they can be written in tree form as well. So if you had something like y is, is x times 10, then that is effectively the same as this absolutely grim line 
uh, where you have your assigned function is first argument y, second argument uh, times asterisk, asterisk is a function for x and 10, great. And then that means that here you would get your first function, which is this fellow. And then the first argument of that is y, which is also a function. No, which is not a function, y. And the second argument, which is a function, which is times. And then the next and the next arguments, which are x and 10. Great. So um, if you generate an expression with prefix calls, that will lead to it being printed in infix form if relevant, if you're doing something that would require you to do that. So for example, here you can put this into the x expra function and it will print out like this. So it's in your kind of more standard readable format. Okay, right. <laughs> uh, I did most of the exercises. Uh, exercise one looks like this for me. I don't, is it, I mean, yeah. Uh, does it look like that for other people? Okay. Yes? No. There's some nodding. There's some yeah. shaking heads. Yeah, for me it looked a bit different. So the 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 dashed uh, squares were not there. I have yeah. black squares and like boxes, but lots of thirty nine mm one m bleh, maybe yeah. Yeah, I mean I had no idea what it was supposed to be, so that's why I skipped it. But if anyone has thoughts on it or would like to talk through it, then I'm happy to attempt that. But otherwise, I'm going to just move on to stuff that I actually was able to understand, not because of not being able to understand the idea, but about not literally being able to understand what this was supposed to be. Okay, great. I also didn't really get it, but I looked at the, the solutions and I still didn't really get it, but somehow there was uh, curly braces, I think, and those Okay. I don't know how, but those somehow um, created these weird uh, outputs. Oh, okay. Maybe I should look at the... See, see if this is useful. It's very slow, okay. Sorry, I don't know why stuff's been slow for me. <laughs> Doesn't look way more promising, to be honest. That's... I wonder if problem with rendering or something. Yeah, I think this, but if you copy that very last line, you, you get something that renders like not insanely. This so, one. Yeah. Or, or the, the one below. So when AST I, plus Z. When I when I copied that, I didn't get this output. No, yeah, I got a normal output, which makes me think like all these weird squiggles were not supposed to be squiggles. Jumpy. Well, this is what my stuff looks like, which is not what it looks like in the book, but I still understand it more than I understand. I wonder if it has something to do with like the way Unicode is done in Windows v Max v Linux. Might be. Uh... Oh, sorry, my stuff's freezing nodes. I might turn my camera off just to. Uh, just to try and deal with that. Found my face, that was fun.
frozen. <laughs> oh no. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Someone else is sharing this screen, which I'm apparently sharing. I mean, this is great. <laughs> you cannot screen share while the other participant is sharing. I mean, oh, no. oh, okay, wait, okay, no. great, she left. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, okay, well, I'll try again. Uh, sorry about that. Hopefully no that will stop. Uh, oh, it's asking if I want to leave the meeting. Is that this meeting or is that that meeting? I might disappear. Again. <laughs> Back soon. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot of explanations of these trees, and I don't think the trees are that complicated. Like in the book, I was like, I don't know that we need so many, so many examples of trees. Yeah. Okay, right. I'm back. Uh, okay. Uh, let me hide that. Um, okay, well, let's go and see how it goes. Um, okay, cool. Well, let's try another exercise. Uh, I did take this literally, so I drew this guy, which you've got your FUG, HI. So they're all like passing down to each other like that. And then you end up with these three arguments. One, two, three, like that. Uh, there were other ones. I feel like, I don't know how you guys felt. I felt it was very exercise heavy. Um, I didn't necessarily feel like I needed to do, so like, I felt like having done this one, looking at the other two, I was like, I think I could do those, but I don't feel the need to prove it. <laughs> um, I was just saying that when you were logged off. That I was oh, like, really? There's a lot of exercises on these trees and I don't think they're that complicated of a- Yeah, a yeah, exactly. And also like, how, you know, is it, do they come up a lot? I don't know. Um, we'll find out. Anyway, that's what an example could look like, but you know that. Um, mainly, it was nice to take some color pens out. Okay, what's happening with the trees below? Uh, we've got this guy, this guy, this guy. Um, and my, well, I wasn't really sure. I mean, this one I felt like it was just like, well, the, the plus, the infix plus is a kind of functiony thing, and so it's been treated like a function. Uh, here you've got these two stars, and that is like a uh, synonym. I don't quite know what the right word is for this kind of exponential little hat sign. Um, I think in the in the hint, carefully read this. Um, it kind of said that it kind of indicated that it, like it had been deprecated an S or something ages ago, but like it still persists in R. Sure, which is fine. I feel like I've seen it around anyway. Um, and then this similarly is like kind of a, well, it's not a exact synonym, but I mean like effect, it's the same function, just like, I guess the arguments get put in a different order. Um, so again, not terribly complicated. Uh, what is special about the AST below? And so we've got, oh, we got the function 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 and then that's got x and y like I yeah I wasn't totally sure I kind of again I think I might have to be simplifying it in my mind but I was like seems fine I mean I guess, is it interesting that this is a square? Is it, do they mind that you don't have both of these because maybe one of these implies this, implies the other one? Gotta say. I didn't yeah. realize that there were these yellow boxes before, but now it's <laughs> confusing me as well. I was totally fo focused on the inline, um, inline source ref. Yeah. 
and what that means or might mean. Yeah. Um, yep. I looked at it and now I'm like, I think I looked at it and was like, yeah, sure. And now I'm like, not totally sure. Um, I'm gonna see. Like, I guess it's saying, cause you're not really making a function. Nothing's happening. I don't know. Or... <laughs> not, cause it's not a function. Uh, blah, 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 blah. The last leaf of the AST is not explicitly specifying the expression. Instead, the source ref attribute, which points to the function source code, is automatically created by base R. Okay. <laughs> Great. The last leaf, the last leaf. Does that mean? So that rather than going through like this, this kind of triggers this, which means that it's then like, it's an inline function. FYI, here's a note back to that. Maybe. Maybe. Or it's just because it's empty that then instead, instead of yeah, because you cannot show it's empty and then it's putting this in line. Well, what right? would, okay, well, what would happen if it wasn't empty? Yeah, I'm wondering. Let's have a look at. X equals one. Two. And then like. X plus Y. Huh. Oh, yeah, it must be having to do with it being an inline function then, yeah. Inline hmm. structure. Sure. So, would it work if we did like a, the, oh, I don't know, like the lambda functions that we do in per? Uh, I, I don't really massively use per, so I'm happy to write something if you narrate it. Yeah, let me think of one. Um, just trying to think how we my brain's working. Um, um, no, I'm, I'm too stupid to think of a way to do this. <laughs> uh, what if you're like... Okay, what if you do wiggle, wiggle x plus y? What about that? What, here? Yeah, let me try. Let me try. Oh, no, that doesn't do what I expect at all. Yeah. Never mind. Never mind. I thought something more interesting would happen. <laughs> okay. Well, I have to say the answer in the answer book doesn't really like. I feel like it's not like. Oh, really? Cool. It's like kind of like. Oh, it's just just does this instead of this. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Cool. Exercise five. What does the call tree of an if statement with multiple? Oh, I didn't do multiple. Just one. That's a shame. With I think I, I think I did multiple, and then it didn't fit on the screen, and then I was like, "We'll do one then." Okay, right. That's not helpful. We can take it into a. Uh, we'll take it into R instead. What does the call tree look like with multiple if else if statements uh, conditions Y? So let's instead go here. Hello, yes. Uh, else. If x equals three, print three. Ooh. That's kind of how I imagined it would look like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I definitely thought that at the time I looked at it before. I think the only thing is that it's turning the, the else ifs into ifs, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so kind of if, and then it's got function, it's got that function, that function. This, and the if function is coming off 
Yes, because it's like if and then it's the next and then it's got the mm -hmm. function equals this and then it's got the function of the first option and the function of the second option. Yeah. I guess. So that if yeah. I don't think having multiple ones of it is making it different. Just keeps nesting it. Mm. Yeah. Okay. What if you just do else, does it? Let's have a look at that. Else. Oh no, it doesn't have, it just kind of is like, is like the next thing. Because I guess if you get there, then that's what we do, okay. Sure. Cool. Right. Now we have a section called expressions. Um, and in this context, so an expression can be any member of the set of base types created by parsing code, can be constant scale of symbols, call objects, and pair lists. Okay. Constants. A constant is either null or um, an atomic vector with length one. Uh, here are some examples, true, to, you know, numbers, strings, single strings, etc. You can test for a constant with this function, is syntactic literal. Uh, these are self-quoting, which means the expression used to represent a constant is the same constant. So, like, if you do expra with one of these, and you just have one of them on its own, it's comes up as identical, which is kind of makes them fairly straightforward. Alternatively, you have symbols. Uh, symbols are more kind of like representative. So they're, you know, attached to or represent the name of an object. Also length one. Um, and there are two ways to create a symbol. I feel like there might be more, but anyway, use expra to capture code referencing an object. Use rlang sim to turn string into a symbol. Because this could, this you know, if it had the quotes around it, then it would be a string, but here it's something else. And you can turn it back into a string with a string. And so then you get the string version of it rather than the symbol version of it. Uh, calls, um, so these represent a captured function call and you can use is call to check because these other ones are weird so here for example we've got type of x when we've got this uh function call captured and it says language which is like not helpful so is call is the best way to check so um once you have calls you can use normal subsetting tools because they are like lists which is cool so if you've got this call then you can first of it and that gives you this function and the first element is always the function of the call um, and then if we look at the arguments uh, and using subsetting with those you can do it uh, you can kind of um, here you've got x and you've subset it with minus one and then you get a, if you put as list you get a list of the arguments that's one way to get a list of those uh, so you've got the argument which is just the name of the, the thing you want to down, um, uh, yeah, import with uh, freed, which is important .csv, and the argument that you've got there, which is backline line skip. And you can also extract named arguments. So if you do use your dollar sign, for example, you can get your blank line skip, and then it tells you what the uh, argument value is. And if you want the number of arguments, you can get the length of x minus one because you don't want the function element. And so that then gives you how many arguments you've got in there. It also uh, is because R, oh, right, not, because R is very flexible with argument matching, um, which means that you can use, uh, you can use arguments in any order. They don't have to be in a specific order if you're going to use them with names, um, but you also don't have to use names or use abbreviated names. 
Um, and that might mean that subsetting using arguments can be uh, sometimes might be misleading if you didn't kind of standardize for it, but you can use call standardized for consistency. So here, for example, we've done that on the uh, on our X object uh, and we get uh, this, which has added in the name of the argument input at the first argument. And then you can modify it um, like other lists. So, for example, you can add the header argument um, with true. Uh, and now we've got that rather doesn't really fit on, but you've got header equals true there now. OK, and then constructing calls, you can use call to uh, this function. Uh, and then you've got your kind of first argument is the name of the function to call and the remaining arguments are the arguments that will be passed to the call. So here you've got call to mean and then you've got x equals this and a rm equals true and that gives you this function uh, call. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and that leads us to these exercises. Which two of the six types of atomic vector can't appear in an expression? And similarly, why can't you create an expression that contains an atomic vector of length greater than one? The six types of atomic vector again come back to like <laughs> chapter three i think four of them were mentioned um in the yeah episode. and then the other two were the special ones the complex and raw oh uh, yes complex and raw so, yes so those, i guess it's, it should be those two because for the other four they said it's possible to have them yes the logical integer double character right yeah. Okay, this is what I want. I'm in the wrong place. Atomic vectors. Two rare types, complex and raw. I won't discuss them further. Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> cool. Helpful. Um, so apparently they're created using functions. Um, and an atomic vector with length greater than one is as well, because you would use your C function. Expressions that include functions are calls. So then you're not doing what you thought you were doing. Um, exercise two, what happens when you subset a call object to remove the first element, e.g read csv foo dot c and then you've got your minus one here okay which we can demonstrate that time i've demonstrated it in the next bit but let's demonstrate it live okay that's a different issue that's not the <laughs> issue <laughs> you get an error <laughs> you get an error that can't find that function <laughs> Okay, yeah, you get this weird, uh, weird looking guy uh, where you've got um, the this foo.csv, which was your kind of first argument of your read CSV, has kind of moved into the function space because you got rid of the first element and the first element is always the function. So now it's kind of shifted everything. So the first element is now what used to be the second element, which is an argument. And so they're trying to treat that like a function. And that's uh, that's not good. Well, it's not going to work. Um, I wonder if it might work sometimes. I wonder if sometimes you have arguments that are functions. But anyway, it's not good. It doesn't work here. Uh, describe the differences between the following call objects. I'm slightly worried I might have cut stuff off the bottom here. Maybe let's look at it in here. I guess it is doing stuff here. I mean, like, and um, oh, I need to go back here. I think the the kind of like immediately obvious difference uh, expressions exercises. 
I mean, like, the naive difference is that some of them <laughs> are expressions, I put an expression around them, and that presumably is going to affect how they work. Um, so okay. I guess. One, first one, it's a call, so it creates a function call, right? So that happens in the first thing? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Sorry. I'm so slow with this like chapter. I will be honest, I did not read this one this week. I was super busy. I <laughs> knew to describe it to me. No worries. I have a bit, so I didn't read it. Um, <laughs> okay, so the first one is creating a function. Yeah. Um, X and NA remove. Yep. Okay. But, yeah, and then it gives us because this one gives us like its overall expression. Yeah. Because I guess it's put median to be like we want median as itself. Itself. Whereas here it's saying use method median. Uh, so here it is basically a symbol or used yeah. as a symbol. Yeah. 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 Then, then okay. It's parsed to use method, and use method would look if we have something um, uh, like connected to yes. Symbol. Ah. Yes, that makes sense. Okay, cool. Whereas, so then here it's got the same thing going on for uh, for median that happened up there, but now we're saying we want x as x so x coming up as x rather than 1 to 10 which got set up here yeah. and ooh, no yeah okay this one just does the thing that we yeah. thought it's it would do oh. yeah that gives you, for you kind of your call yeah cool mm. then we have call standardized doesn't work so well for the following calls why what makes mean quote special so we've got stuff like this so we've got call standardized which is supposed to make all of these look the same uh hypothetically if they've got the same yeah because they're true they're going for the same kind of vibe uh it does not do that um so my understanding is that this is to do with so mean doesn't have many arguments or indeed it's got like just those kind of like dot dot dots you know i'm sure that's the technical term so its only argument is x and then kind of other stuff gets passed through which means that uh you can't use standardized ex or call standardized because it only works on arguments that are kind of defined in the function itself. So uh, it doesn't have a way of specifically dealing with this, I guess, because like, if you do that, well, then you kind of have a lot of possible routes to go and get arguments maybe. Uh, and maybe not an obvious way of like prioritizing between them. Uh, yeah, I don't know if that makes me special but I mean yeah <laughs> I think it's why it's not working is it is it anything to do with like there being issues of s3s because I was just I did the same thing where I did help or sorry not essays generic functions rather than methods like mm. functions may be problematic to some degree I, I don't know I, I just looked at the help and noticed it's a generic Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I would have thought. I mean, I guess I'm not totally okay with that distinction, but I would have felt that it. Sh well, let's remind ourselves of what call standardized says here, in case it says anything along those lines. Is this um, to work around this problem 
Okay, that's kind of all it says on it. Okay, okay, cool. So this doesn't really explain it. Just <laughs> yeah, it's not why. Um, but I reckon I can imagine, because it could go dot, dot, dot to a few places, and if you've got some arguments from one place and some arguments from another place, yeah. you it wouldn't necessarily be, or you'd have to set up a way to prioritise which order they would go in between mm -hmm. them. Um, yeah. Okay. Why does this code not make sense? Just answer this. Yeah, okay, I did answer it. Uh, I thought I looked at the exercises, but <laughs> <laughs> there are so many. Um, okay, so you've got your x of your foo x equals one, and then mm. your names of x are x and nothing, but, but x, it, yeah, it's it's naming uh foo right because um when you use the mm. Mm -hmm. you have basically a list with the elements and the first element is the function name and the second yes. element is the, the yep. yeah. yeah yes yeah so then you just get so then it doesn't have like x equals anymore because it's got rid of it with that i guess so it's the only thing but yes the first element is the function, so yeah, oh, yeah, and it doesn't show you that foo is now named x because of the yeah, one. yeah, makes sense, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's <laughs> more, um, god, did I do this? <laughs> okay, sure, construct the expression if because I did because I did like all of this on Saturday. And so then I have to say the second half, I really lost the will. Um, so, I was, so this feels like very far away. Uh, <laughs> okay, construct the expression, if X is bigger than one, A else B, using multiple calls to call two. How does the code structure reflect the structure of the AST? I'm not sure I did that specific bit. Okay, so we've got, if x was one a else b okay so you've got call two which is your call creation thing so you've got your if function effectively and then you've got your this function and then you've got your x and one and your a and your b anyway it comes up with this which is that lots of call twos i feel that's not very uh elegant but there you go. Okay, cool. I think that's the end of three, which is where we were going up to, I think. I'm so glad I was so confused. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think some that's of it. I think some of it, I feel like I didn't, I actually didn't, okay, wait, how do I stop? Okay, where's my Zoom thing gone? Oh, there it is. Okay. Like, I was reading it and then I thought, yeah, that makes sense. The trees totally make sense and stuff. And then, mm. but then like, for example, this last exercise with the call two, yeah. um, I was sitting there and thinking like, what is call two again? What? what <laughs> Why do you use it actually? So what, what do you need it for? <laughs> yeah, I feel like, I mean, I think it's, I think it's an explicit decision on the part of the book, but something that does feel like it lacks a bit in this kind of stuff is being like, and why would I care about that? Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> so I think actually, like, I don't, I actually, maybe it's because I was, doing the chapter so I was kind of probably focusing a bit harder than I might have but I felt like I this half I felt like relatively good about but I'm still I'm like okay cool and mm -hmm. some of this you know I'm not I think I can see how some of it can be useful but it still doesn't like I feel like I could have it grounded in some more mm -hmm. tangible examples 
to really hammer it home. Yeah. Also in the middle of the uh, of this part of the chapter, when I read it, I thought maybe I should go back again to the big picture chapter and read mm. if there's something about like why why are we doing this? Um, mm. Because I didn't remember that there was any like yeah, this is really useful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. Say that in here. I'm skimming through it now. <laughs> Don't be surprised if you're straight or confused. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like, you know, I like the idea that code is data. And I can see, like, it feels like, like I can imagine, well, I don't know if, when I say I can imagine, I mean, I can quite abstractly imagine that like being able to be like, treat code as something that is, you can kind of construct or pass around, mm -hmm. maybe giving you some more flexibility in some tasks, uh, particularly like where it means that you don't have to like define stuff up front. So um, something sort of like this, only when I'm trying to make really weird, complicated plots across many different variables and I'm just like eh I'm gonna quote somehow like I basically googled how to pass in variable name like yeah when I'm looping through like oh I'm gonna do essentially a similar ish plot yeah many different variables so I've done something like that so I wonder if it's useful for that kind of thing yeah when you don't have to kind of have the variable kind of hard coded yeah. in effectively yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah and i i only know this because i've googled these things and i've definitely used like express before yeah but I, what I was doing i was like oh okay google told me to wrap it in extra therefore yes <laughs> wrap it <in> extra <laughs> yeah exactly yeah yeah I think actually today I also saw it in some function, but that person used paste and then eval and like not expro but paste to like mm. build the expression and then eval. <laughs> mm. Mm. Well, maybe. It will, will become more apparent but yeah I yeah I should probably not anti-hype the next half <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think yeah, like, actually it's this. not all of it it's just there's this bit which probably is what I'm literally saying is what I want but the bit that is there's a bit that's a bit more of like an example of using this um so maybe that is maybe I actually just need to go back and read that again properly which I am going to do anyway because I feel like I didn't understand it um but the grammar and stuff is fine. Um, and whatever the other bit is, it's fine. I think it was just like, the bit which was like, here's a walkthrough. And I was like, okay, I'm pasting this stuff in because that's what you're saying the next step is, but do I know why? No. <laughs> but uh, I will have another, how will review that. I'll also put a question in the channel, see if anybody wants to give us like, Lots of useful examples. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I remembered? Like, at the start of this, we had like a discussion about like, oh, what data set should we use for this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never used a data set for this other than like just using examples and sometimes like adapting them to be like slightly more interesting. I think it's a carryover maybe from like, well, I think cohort one really tried to do data different examples but then also the our club for data science where it made sense for them to be like using data examples mm. I think it was people crossed over from those two and it's like ah oh, we'll need a data set yeah <laughs> yeah yeah we don't we haven't done a huge amount with like data I guess you could yeah with data <laughs> um so, yeah uh, all data because code is data all data yeah, now we're now we're really getting into the data side of it. Do you 
Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, good stuff. Uh, and we'll come back to the next half in a week. Thank you. <laughs> Problem. Cool. Talk to you guys soon. See you guys. Bye. Bye bye.